Beyond Technical, Competitive Gaming. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Beyond Technical. Uh, you might notice that the setup is exactly the same as the second episode with uh, the Nidalee, and that's because I'm going to be playing back-to-back -back games. Uh, for anybody who knows anything about me, it is that I'm not very good at giving up. So, uh, try not to stay too frustrated after a, a loss and get back in there and aim for another win. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, if for anybody who watches all the episodes, the previous episode, uh, I just think is a really good point, and I was just thinking about how toxicity is so negative. Like, there's a lot of things that I usually pay attention to or watch out for that I wasn't even keeping up with because I was so busy just getting abused the entire game, and it's really hard to ignore, uh, especially when you know you can't rely on the player or the people that you're playing with to to for, or fulfill their roles, and they're off running around doing their own thing. So. Um, Hopefully we can maybe get a little bit better match going on and uh, maybe pull out a win for you guys. I mean, I I know I sure like a winning. And uh, I'll tell you guys what I think about uh, team composition as we go this time as well. Let's ask for AD carry, please. All right, so banning is... I don't know if I should include the banning. Maybe you guys can let me know, uh, for the people that are watching this, if you like seeing this phase or if you'd rather the video start kind of when the game starts uh, so I can just start ranting and raving from there. I mean, you can clearly always skip in, but... Even just rendering and processing all of this video takes uh, a decent amount of time for the extra 5 or 10 minutes in the beginning for the banning phase. But I do think it's an important portion of the game uh, to identify. They've banned Cassiopeia, which I think is a very weak ban in solo queue. Rare, very few people know how to play her, and even those that do, don't necessarily do the greatest job um, on Cass. So I wouldn't personally uh, ban her. But she can be a strong middle champion. Uh, I'm guessing somebody is trying to go something that she would counter, but I can't even imagine what that would be. Hecarim's a much stronger choice, so is Shen. Shen's a really surprise hero. For people that aren't uh, really super into, or that people aren't super aware of everything that's going on, Shen just, oh no, he's there, and now they have a shield, or they like, people that are trying to go overly aggressive and dive can get caught up by that. Uh, you can very easily turn the tide of a fight. He's just like Twisted Fate or any other teleport heroes. And again, you got your holy trio, Amumu, Malphite, and Blitzcrank, which almost everybody bans because they're very, very difficult champions to deal with. Uh, they are, you can handle them, but the level of difficulty required to deal with them is just almost not worth it. So, uh, we have a Nasus on our team, which I have a love-hate relationship when people choose Nasus. Either he seems to do incredibly well, or they don't understand that his Q button stacks when you hit last hit creeps, and they do horrendously bad. Uh, but his debuff is so strong on an AD carry. You basically have to go cleanse when you see Nasus on the other team. Uh... I'm thinking I should probably be a champion with a little bit of mobility this game. Because they have a lot of grab you with Rise, lock you in with Jarvan. I don't think I'm going to want to go something like a Misfortune. Although we'll see what their other uh, their, their third pick here is before I make my final call. Uh, I'm in a very misfortune mood lately. I like to, to grab MF and just... Uh, that ultimate is so satisfying when you can just fall back, fall back, and pull it off. Yeah, they also have a Kale. I'm going to go something with, uh, I think I'm probably just going to go Ezreal this game. Uh, get some captain mobility going for me. Time for a true display of skill. Oh, I dislike Ezreal. <laughs> um, he just, I don't know. He's a very girly AD carry. I like uh, stuff like, you know, like Dead Man, man walking. walking. Time for a true display of skill. Girly voice. Anyways, um, dainty Ezreal aside, I think Ezreal's going to be a good choice for this game because he... Oh, people are arguing already. No! Nice to one another. Uh, I think he'll be a good decision for this because Kale has a lot of rundown. He has a lot of burst damage as well. Ryze has a very strong catch. Um, ah, Draven. See, that's the problem having to pick AD carry first. AD carries can easily be countered in lane. Um, I mean, so can most lanes, I suppose. Uh, but Tarek will be good for this, because he'll be able to keep the Draven off of me, and Sona is more of a passive... Well, he's an aggressive passive support. Uh, you can go aggressive, but most of the time you're going to be passive with Sona. Because if you just run in there all the time, you're just going to get shattered and killed, because she has like 410 health or something on level 1. So, I am thinking... See, I can't really make up my mind. I love Barrier, but I think I'm going to have to go cleanse in this one so that I don't get Sona ulti at any point in the game. I think that that will be very, very important. Uh, also, the Kale Slow and the Rise Root. So I have three things that I can cleanse off, which generally is about when cleanse gets uh, gets to be worth it. That Draven had better go cleanse as well, or he's going to be in for some trouble. 
Uh, although Nasus is in our jungle, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, nice jungle Nasus would be great. He could run out of the lane and just force that Draven to burn a cleanse uh, pretty much every time. Sona doesn't have an amazing peel. She's mostly good for being an aggressive support. She just has a nice support, a nice passive support in lane with her regularly. So their team is pretty strong. Uh, they have a lot of damage. Rise hits one target really hard. Kale hits one target really hard. Draven hits one target really hard. So they have a ton of single target burst. Um, we have a little bit better AoE team damage, I guess, because Malzahar can drop his gate, which hits multiple targets. His circle can hit multiple targets, but he's mostly a one hero gun down as well. I think that they have the, the stronger team here. I think that Nasus is going to be our linchpin. We're going to need that Nasus to do a lot of damage and be farmed, or else we're just going to get killed. Uh, if I had to make a prediction right now, I think we're going to lose, based solely off of team composition. And I have a shockingly accurate um, guess, I suppose, when I just from based off team composition, whether I'm going to win or when I'm, whether I'm going to lose. I can usually tell you right now. Jarvan's going to jump in. Kale and Rise are going to go pew pewing whatever target they can get a hold of. I'm not really going to be able to kill anything because that Jarvan's going to be in the way, and clearly I can't go in too close because if Kale and Rise turn and hit me at the same time, I'm going to instantly die. So I'm going to have to use the range of Ezreal, which means I'm probably going to want to go with Bloodthirst through this game uh, instead of like a Blade of the Rune King or anything for a rundown. They don't have a ton of super high health targets as well. Draven did go cleanse, which was smart of him because he wants to get out of Taric's stun, he wants to get out of Nasus's slow. And... Uh, yeah, we're just gonna have to see. Hopefully, uh, the other the other thing, Nasus could easily turn this game if he wins his lane. Uh, but I think that's gonna be a very rough lane because Nasus is not the strongest laning champion. He has a really tough time. Most people can't seem to play Nasus very well in lane. He does have teleport, so he could blink somewhere and go get a couple of kills, which would help him snowball really well. Uh, and the Jin Zhao could also really decide this. But Jin Zhao and Jarvan, in my opinion, are both very strong junglers. So either one could swing this either way. As standard, always pick up your Q first on Ezreal. I have a Taric, but they have a Draven and a Sona, so I'm going to go Doran's because Draven can basically kill me in like one, like one little auto attack rundown. Um, that hero is... I really think Draven needs a little bit of an early game nerf. I think that he's perfectly fine and balanced uh, a little bit later on, but he can like almost two or three shot people and Over it doesn't here. really have much of a mana cost since catching his Glaive refreshes everything for free. So I think Draven really needs to be toned down just a little bit because he just deals way too much auto attack damage at level 1. Uh, or low levels, I suppose. Not just level 1. Let's level go. 1, 2, 5 approximately. He can just dominate everything. Meanwhile, my Mystic Shot is a skill shot that has to be landed. It can't go through creeps. I can't uh, I can't keep up with it as well. I mean, the only downside is he has to catch his Glaives. But it's really not that hard because the game's basically coded to throw the Glaive where you're going to be walking next anyways. So it's only when you do like a drastic shift in direction that the glaives don't really call you at all. Oh, there's a good face check. Maybe we can kill this guy. Ah, oh, that, right. That was good. I don't really know why we peeled off this Draven. Oh, that's why. I'm gonna have to burn a flash on this probably. Nope. Let's walk away. Again, always save your flashes if you can. Uh, I'm low, so I'm gonna back. They can do everything that we can. Jin has plenty of health, and we got our first blood for that, so uh, that didn't go too too badly. I'm gonna pick up a couple of potions. You know, what? let's go with a third one, and then I can easily just farm away in lane. Even if Draven auto attacks me a little bit, uh, I also got a little bit of XP from that and uh, about a hundred gold. So. Uh, hopefully these potions will give me some sort of advantage, but because we have a Sona and a Taric, I doubt we're going to see much of it matter. Uh, maybe I'll come by and help this really good. Yep, or he can just smite it. It's generally best to go the smiteless, um, but I can see why he smited there. He wasn't going to get a ton of assistance from us. And it looks like I've only missed one CS here. So I got XP for both of those, which is good. I only managed to pick up one of them, so bye bye 20 gold. But I think a chunk of XP and a first blood assist is probably worth it. So right there, I got a nice little poke off and I backed uh, without him getting to hit me back again. So that was a good stun by Tarek. Draven went a little bit too far and just took an extra step and I uh, got a little bit of lane harass for it. Lane harass is uh, the higher level 
play you get, the more important it becomes. So like getting a little victory like that can set you ahead, and uh, it's surprising what you can do with a tiny lead in lane. However, Draven is the much stronger champion, so I have to play almost perfectly, whereas he can make a lot of mistakes and still do just fine. Um, that's kind of my problem with Ezreal, is he's a, a fantastic champion in terms of mobility, but he just does not have the strength that the other champions have. I suppose his... Yeah, I want that CS, but I can't get it right now safely. That somehow missed Sona. I could have sworn that would hit her. See, this CS is going to be a little bit messed up. I'm going to miss a few of them. No time to waste. Oh, no, not quite. I'm picking up most of these. Uh, CSing on towers can be really difficult. It's basically like a, a guessing game of where everything's going to go next. Oops, see that one? I shot a little bit too early. Nah, I can get these attacks off faster. This is not going very well. And Draven, the other problem too is when he gets two of those spinning, it's ridiculous. Every single attack is just like... It's like if I can shoot a Q every half a second, like it's insane damage. You just won't match that anywhere else. I don't know why Terra didn't do anything off of that. I guess he's trying to bait that out. There we go. Let's see, I got to move backwards, which uh, let us pick up that Draven. If I'd stayed in right there, I definitely would have died. So, now if I roll a couple of potions, uh, I can probably push this lane out a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to be able to kill that Sona because I don't have enough mana, so I'm not going to waste my time. I'm just going to try and get these, uh, this CS down. Shove it. Uh, I hate having to type to people. Oops. Uh, so that is Ezreal's strength, his mobility. If you get a straight up fight, you will almost always lose. So you need to be very, very crafty with your blinks. And because you have Arcane Shift and Flash, you basically have double Flash, which gives you a huge advantage. Now it's really nice that Sona actually be now the Creep Wave, which is going to take a little bit of CS away from Draven. So as I said, I'm probably going to Bloodthirster. I don't think I need boots just yet, so I'll get the, uh, the Sustain. And between Terra Keel and a Doran's and a Vamp Scepter, even if I get knocked down to about half health, I think I can probably uh, just auto attack my way back up. Let's go. Oh, you know what? I'm kind of losing some FPS because I think this is running over here. There we go. It's a little bit smoother. I might play a little bit better now. No, FPS can make a surprising difference sometimes, but it shouldn't be a make or break moment. So unfortunately, uh, Tarek got that kill, but it doesn't mean that I'm not ahead. Uh, I got the assist and Draven got nothing, and this I'm way. still up 2 CS so far, which means I'm just a mild bit ahead of him. Uh, and I have that assist from the first blood early as well. So those potions didn't necessarily win me the lane, but it was nice to have them so I could keep farming. If I hadn't have had those, I would have had to back a little bit earlier. And I'd probably be behind in CS by a tiny little bit. Uh, I'm gonna get killed for this. Yep, there's no way. Ah, uh, that was bad of me. I wasn't paying enough attention. Our whole team is gonna probably clean this up though, so... I hope Malzahar can do something. Yeah. So they dove, like, really crazy for me there. Um, I didn't expect them to go that in that far in because it was honestly a terrible decision. They got one Ezreal and they just lost a bunch of people. We're now at 5 to 1. So... I died, which is bad, and I'm not supposed to die, and I should have been paying more attention and getting out alive, but um, they all died too, so that's kind of okay, and I got now I'm 1 and 3 assists, which is a lot better than, well, 1, 2, 0, 3 is probably not that far off in money, but most of my team's getting far ahead, which I actually prefer. Um, I find that I'm a pretty safe player, so if my teammates can get uh, farmed, I find they put it to, to really good use. And especially on an Ezreal, um, you're not going to be like MF faulting the whole team down. So if someone can be 10 and 0, I'd probably rather. Well, on this team, I don't know. Maybe me. No, maybe the Nasus. Uh, I like. I want the the strongest late game hero to, to be farmed. And uh, Ezreal's not the strongest late game hero. Uh, although you do want enough farm that uh, the AD or the cruisers can't just run you down. You want to be able to blink away and fall back and fight them as you go. Uh, you basically end up just keeping people busy. Really bad smite, but oh hello! I don't want to blink into that. Well, I want to blink into that bush, but I shouldn't. 
Um, so now here's our problem. My whole team came bottom, shoved my lane, and I'm only at 27 CS, which is really low right now. Uh, this has been a lot of fighting. So again, my teammates are winning, but they're kind of screwing me over a little bit. I'm going to ward this and push mid a little bit and try and pick up some CS over here. Alright, so I gotta be careful of Jarvan. Uh, he can definitely jump on me and kill me. Any bruiser can basically kill any AD anytime they want. Now the issue here is that because Draven's pushed in, he's actually gonna take a nice CS lead. So I'm gonna have to do things like jungle and... Uh, I mean, I don't really... Oh, Malzar's backing. Okay. I'll take his middle now. Or he's gonna stop back. Either way, I'm gonna take his middle. You take my tower. I farm it. And remember, anybody playing AD carry, you are extremely important. Take the CS, take the kill. Um, everybody else, leave the kill for the AD carry. Uh, if your AD carry can get up a few kills, that's going to be really helpful because they just easily deal the most damage on your on your whole team. Now this is kind of bad because I'm going to get zoned right here, and I'm going to go all the way around. Um, I don't know why you did that, Tarek. I don't want them shattered. Kind of shot that off center a little bit, but she must have wide hitboxes, so. Now, right now, I'm focused a lot on CS. Uh, I need to get my CS up, it's just way too low. At this point in the game. I find on, uh, Ezreal is a, a tough champion for CSing because his abilities don't really help him CS all that much. Uh, his Q button gives him like another auto attack, I suppose. Or a strong auto attack. Now, Jinja looks like he wants to go in, but we're on tower right now, so it's no really not a, an ideal time to get which is why we're just going to let him do his thing. He can catch them really well in lane or like we're close, but we're not going to run through this, the creep wave. They're going to see us coming a mile away and they're just going to back off and then we're going to miss a bunch of CS on the tower. So uh, you got to pick and choose when to go in. Uh, if your jungle is not making a good call, you don't have to join them. So always keep that in mind. Uh, just give them a V ping usually to let you know or to tell them to back off and that you're not going to go, go with them. So luckily uh, we got this lane shoved out fast enough that I'm actually safely pushing this in a little bit, although we could use another ward over here uh, on the tri bush that would help to make sure that nothing's about to pop up and kill us, but I've got double flash up so I feel pretty safe. Um, I don't want to use it, obviously, but uh, I need to get CS somewhere, so I'm going to start taking some risks now that this tower is down. Thankfully, they're knocking down other towers, so that's going to give me the opportunity to back and pick up my BF sword at 10 minutes, which isn't too bad. Uh, they might have this warded, but they don't seem to be coming for me. Oh, Sona is. Uh, I hate backing. They always somehow find a way to come poke me even though I think I'm I'm gonna pull it off. That 0.5 second talent would be awesome. There we go. Got out of there that time. Alright. Kinda sore today. This sitting up straight thing always kinda makes me makes my shoulders a little bit sore. Know your uh, environment. Plus, you know, lifting weights and stuff tends to add to that, so combine the two and uh, I don't think I can play League for an entire 12 hours today. But it's a nice weekend, it's pretty sunny, I'm sure you can probably tell, there's some big windows on the side of the Ah, oh, I got a splash off. That was really, really, really bad reaction time by me. Oh. And now I'm gonna have to flash out. Yeah, that was, that was bad. I don't know how we didn't see him get in the bush. At least I didn't notice him. I'm gonna probably watch this later and kick myself for not realizing that. I was a little too focused on how I missed my, uh, my ulti. That was also a good flash by Ryze to get out of there. I mean, I would have hit him if he didn't flash, but I could have shot it a little earlier and picked it up no matter what. So now the problem is that bot tower is gonna go down, which I almost want uh, just for the farming, farming sakes, but I don't want because that gives them money and stuff. Uh, so thankfully we've got somebody porting in. Uh, NASA's or, oh, Malsa Hard's port? Didn't even pay attention to that, that was only Nasus. Now I don't want to run into this push blind in case they're waiting, and now I'm good. So the longer you can keep your towers for, uh, the better. Now he's asking me why would I come bot after he ported, but there's nothing... There's just really, there's nothing I can be doing in middle until about right now, so, uh... Whatever. 
Uh, I do the justification song and dance. I'm not doing poorly. Uh, see, now I need to go bottom. That, that was kind of bad. I shouldn't pay attention to no that. I didn't realize how fast or how quickly they push this up. Um. They'll still take a second or two to get up there. I don't know where they went though, so I need to be careful. Careful. Uh, as I said, in almost every match I'll probably mention this, toxicity. You don't need to, like, that guy, like, there's nothing productive about asking why I'm roaming. I'm not roaming. I, well, I mean, I'm roaming, but I'm leaving my lane because they shoved my tower at, like, five minutes. So... But I don't need to justify that to him. He knows why I'm not in my lane, and I'm in my lane now. Like, you know, I'm clearing everything. He teleported bot, which was nice to cover my tower. His tower is now being attacked, and I can, you know, I could harass him back about the same thing. But it's not gonna, it's not gonna help anything. So, for the most part, honestly, I really wish they put voice chat in League of Legends. I find something about being able to speak to your teammates with a microphone generally has people on better behavior. I mean, they just. That, that vocal tone makes them a little bit nicer. Not always, clearly, you know, some people are still going to be assholes no matter where you go. But uh, when you can hear them talking, people are generally nicer. Like, typing, you're a fucking idiot, versus saying it, just, it feels more harsh when it comes out of your mouth, so. Um, okay, so now, uh, I don't know if I want to push bottom a little more. I probably do before I back. And there's Sona, but I don't want to go over there either. Didn't he just throw that at the dragon? Did he throw across the whole map, maybe? Must have. No problem. Alright, so my teammates are doing well. Um, my score is not terrible either. Uh, I've been a decent, or I've been a part of a decent enough kills now. My CS is still really... Well, it's getting to where it should be. Uh, as I said, I've been focusing on it for a little bit now, which is why this Maldahar seems very, very upset with me. Um, but it's the right thing to do. I need to get out of there. That Draven will kill me. Oh no, get him! I was really close on the Sona there. Uh, now I have to back. There's, I can't safely stay to defend this tower, so hopefully somebody can help Derek out. Uh, by that, and I can't afford anything else for now. So again, uh, because I think I'm going to have to poke against things like Rise and Kale, I'm going to go with the Bloodthirster because it's stronger for poking than something like a Blade of the Rune King. I do like Blade of the Rune King on Ezreal sometimes if you're going to be able to do like a rundown, but I'm not going to be able to do a rundown against Draven no with a cleanse. Uh, even with a stun, shatter, exhaust, he can just cleanse something off and then auto attack me to death. So even a Blade of the Rune King is going to be worth it. But if you're fighting something like a Caitlyn, sometimes Blade of the Rune King is a good item to go because you can... Uh, use your arcane shift to get in on her, slower, and even if she does her little net jump, you can just run right back up to her and start shooting her again, so. Uh, and the slow is really something that uh, a lot of people overlook is, it does damage, it steals health, it steals movement speed, and it slows them, so that gives you a lot of advantage in terms of like starting a fight. Uh, your support hero can also catch up to them, so like Tarek might not be able to land a stun on Caitlyn, but if I arcane shift slow her, then it's a lot easier to get that stun off, so. Uh, that's why stuff like Blade of the Rune King, even though it's not necessarily the best for damage all the time, can give you a huge boost in terms of the game. There's so many factors to League of Legends. No and now everyone's trash talking again. Uh, but at least he's talking about the other team, so I like useless scales. Oh, here comes Jarvan. Oh, that was bad. I clicked that too quickly. <laughs> Go away. I'm tired of the game. this, I suppose. Alright. Nice. Shatter is pretty ridiculously good. Oh, he gets out! That was close. <laughs> I didn't think that route would go off. I get a little more health, I can... Terex stuns. Stun. Got it. That is why you stick around on Ezreal, because his mobility is fantastic. So, yeah, that went alright for us. Um, kind of surprised that Ryze got that root off on me, but uh, I guess I got it just in the nick of time. Uh, 
Now, what should I go next? How much armor have they got? The Jarvan's starting to get quite a bit. Um, I think I'm probably going to build my Infinity Edge, so I'll just save it for the next uh, BF Sword because I think I can grab that pretty quickly, and it looks like the lanes are fairly shoved right now, so I will probably just go push a lane and then back. Oh, wait. There, I'm back now. Might as well pick it up before I leave the base, so I'm only right here. I think it's faster to be from there, although I can't tell you for sure. Uh, and then I use a blink, which, oh no, like I lost 80 mana, but by the time I get to a lane, you generally regen about 60 to 80 mana. So you can normally use your mobility move one time on your way back from lane, which doesn't sound like a lot, but little tricks like that can help you get back and get farming a lot faster. So I highly suggest it. I know I always dash at least once on Graves, and uh, ooh, see now this Draven wants to push his tower, so I want to go on him. But I now have a huge lead in terms of uh, items, so... I can easily fight him if he wants to join on this. Uh, I don't know about easily if this may creeps. Oh, pretty easy. Well, he got my tower, which I didn't want, but uh, Ezreal's mobility makes it really tough to 1v1 him because you can just flash out of the way of their skill shots. So uh, I know I always get frustrated when I fight Ezreal's with Graves because they... Uh, they just hit arcane shift and they somehow always do it right as I ulti. <laughs> so it'll just pew, straight off into the sky. Uh, so looks like my teammates to clean that up and this is one of those good games where I think we're gonna win it. Uh, we're up by a lot of kills and my team's doing really well. Uh, and you see how the toxicity goes down a lot when you're winning, everybody's happy and they're not trash talking one another. And the other thing I had going on this game is that my support hero actually did a really good job. He, uh, he stayed with me, he warded. Um, actually he's managed to get three kills himself so... Uh, he's been doing a really, really fantastic job. And I've been on the outskirts a little bit, which is nice, because when your team's doing really well, you can just, uh, you know, basically as an AD carry, you just want to make sure that you're there for the late game. So if they need you to do all the damage, you're going to be capable of doing that. So my CS, again, it's kind of low because of all the fighting that's been going on in this game, but I'm 3-1-4, and four, which is a great score. Uh, okay, the blue is gone. And, uh, yeah, it looks like we just control pretty much everything here. So I might as well, I've got a lot of mana, so I might as well go clear creep wave before I back. Uh, I don't really need the money specifically in a second, but it's always good to get more farm than less farm. Uh, so I try and, if I've got a bunch of mana and I'm near a creep wave or a creep camp, I try and just burn it off. I think I can probably pick up these golems too. Uh, everybody else is just fighting. <laughs> uh, I don't think they're going to need my ulti. Uh, see, I know this might not be going well. I'm going to up Damn, hit the rise. And then I get an assist at least. So, time for me to back, pick up uh, another item, and then I can go join them once I've got some mana. I'll clear up bottom wave first. Uh, the problem with uh, winning is that your team gets really scattered. So, right now, their positioning is actually not very good for what's going on. We should get this cleared out before we try and make any push up in the middle. But we're so far ahead that we don't have to play like some sort of protein or something where they can just dive the tower and walk in and basically do what they want. Which is actually a bad habit to get into, but I guess if you're winning, you're winning and you can kind of do whatever you'd like. No time to waste. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna push this out, and then I'm gonna go join them for whatever wonky push they're up to. I guess they're probably gonna end up backing. Maybe I should just keep pushing this lane. Let's go. Uh, they're just getting a ton of kills now. And again, the reason that uh, I'm not with them at all times is because uh, it's we're, we have such a lead that I might as well just continue keep like. Um, it's like when uh, a lot of RTS players do this. It's called uh, like consolidating your lead. So if you're gonna loot, or if you're if you get ahead or you win a fight or something, you don't necessarily go and rush their base. You fall back and you build more bases or more stuff in your base, and you kind of you you take your chance to farm or you go kill the dragon or something. You don't want to always push your advantage because you can easily lose your advantage uh, if you get too greedy with it. So I don't know what's going on up there. I guess no, they don't need to They're gonna kill them or what? Um, so that's basically what we're doing now. Like, we are crazy far ahead, but we don't want to lose. We just want to keep playing, and you want to play smart. So don't go diving in there, especially low-rated players. I see this all the time. 
uh, their teams are so easy to beat because they just dive and dive and dive once they start winning. And sometimes it snowballs really well and it's super fun. It's like, oh yeah, I got like 25 kills. Oh, that's so cool. And other times you go, oh, what happened? I was up 10 kills and now I'm losing. I don't understand. And it's because you start bad fights. You gave them an opportunity to come back. Or you fought on their tower. You did something you shouldn't have. Um, so my goal is it's going to be 25 minutes soon. I want to get as close to 200 CS as possible. Uh, to make sure that I am relatively farmed. Now, I don't see us losing this game, so I'm not overly concerned about a whole lot of what's going on. My teammates are just jumping all over the place and fighting people, but they're coming out alive, so I'm not going to say anything, I'm just going to keep on farming. That is your job as AD carry. About 30 minutes is when you're supposed to start doing all the work. Uh, so you want to make sure you're ready. And, you know, clearly join team fights and stuff and get objectives in the meantime, because the more money your team has, the better you can do. So there you go. Just keep on farming, and uh, you get a GG. You win the game. Victory. Nice, uh, I guess a nice easy one for me. I didn't have to do a whole lot of work. There wasn't crazy stressful moments. There's a few good plays of blinking over walls to kind of pick up an extra kill or two. And I only died one time. So, And the one death that I got, I think, gave my team three kills. So that was a... Uh, I'd like to have zero deaths at the end of the game, but when you can get like a significant advantage early game by you know, having them dive that far just to kill the Ezreal, it's completely worth it. So, as I said earlier, uh, the Nasus is probably going to be our linchpin. If he plays a good Nasus, he can easily win this for us. And he went 7-0. and So, looks like Jungle, Jungle gave him a good hand. And, uh, yeah, we won that one. So, as always, subscribe, follow on Facebook or whatever if you like the show and you want to see more episodes. I will keep making these. They take a really long time to... Uh, do the rendering and uploading. So I'm going to try and keep them going at a pretty steady pace, but I also like to use my computer to play games sometimes. So my internet connection can't always be sucked up with uploading or my computer or my processing speed can't always be sucked up with rendering. So I'll keep funneling these out whenever I can and uh, keep giving you guys some content. Hope you guys appreciate it. As always, ask any questions you want in the comments. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, you learned something new or you're, I helped improve your game somehow, or at least you were entertained for however long this went on for. So uh, 23 minute game, probably not the longest episode. Uh, thank you very much. See you guys next time.